Chapter 49. Returning Home Like a child who follows in the steps of his benefactors, I arrived in my hometown with the indescribable sensation of a traveler returning home after a long absence. No, the surroundings had not changed noticeably. The old trees of the neighborhood, the sea, the sky, the same smells in the air. Intoxicated with joy, I no longer noticed the expression of extreme preoccupation on Laura's face, and I took my leave of the small band, who went on ahead. Clarencio embraced me and spoke. You have a whole week at your disposal. I'll come here daily in order to see you and to handle the problems of our sister's reincarnation. If you wish to return to Nosalar, you can do so in my company. Take care, Andre. After a last goodbye to Lysias's devoted mother, I found myself alone, deeply breathing the air of times past. I didn't waste any time examining details. I quickly crossed the few streets on the way home. My heart was beating faster and faster as I got closer to the large entrance gate. The wind, like yesteryear, whispered caresses in the trees of the yard. Azaleas and roses were in bloom, greeting the light of spring. Across from the front door rose the stately palm tree that Zelia and I had planted on our first wedding anniversary. Full of joy, I went inside. Everything had changed radically. Where was the old wooden furniture? and the big portrait in which my wife, myself, and our little children formed such a gracious group. Something made me anxious. What had happened? I began to stagger with emotion. I went into the living room where I saw my youngest daughter, now transformed into a marriable young woman. Almost at the same moment, Zelia came out of our bedroom, following a gentleman who at first sight seemed to be a doctor. I shouted my joy with the full strength of my lungs, but the words only seemed to echo throughout the house without being heard by the inhabitants. Then I understood the situation and fell silent, downcast. I embraced my wife with the care of my immense longing for her, but she seemed totally insensitive to the gesture of love. Zelia very respectfully asked the man something I couldn't immediately make out. The man answered obligingly in a low voice. Only tomorrow will I be able to make a sure diagnosis, for the pneumonia is displaying serious complications due to his high blood pressure. Dr. Ernesto is in need of extreme care and absolute rest. Who could this Dr. Ernesto be? I lost myself in a sea of questions when I heard my wife anxiously plead, But doctor, please save him, I implore you. Oh, I couldn't bear a second widowhood. Zelia wept and wrung her hands in great anguish. A thunderbolt couldn't have struck me with greater violence. Another man had taken over my home. My wife had forgotten me. The house was no longer mine. Had it been worth it to have waited so long only to reap such disillusionment? I ran to my room and discovered that there was different furniture in the spacious alcove. On the bed was a middle-aged man, clearly in a deteriorating state of health. Beside him, three dark figures walked to and fro, showing quite a bit of interest in aggravating his sufferings. At first, I was willing to hate this intruder with all my strength, but I was no longer the same man as before. The Lord had called me to the teachings of love, fraternity, and forgiveness. Although I realized that the poor man was surrounded by inferior entities devoted to evil, I was unable to help him immediately. I sat down, despondent and downcast, watching Zelia walk in and out of the room several times, caressing the sick man with a tenderness that she had devoted to me in the past. After a few hours of bitter observation and meditation, I returned, staggering into the living room where I found my two daughters in conversation. A few more surprises awaited me. The older one had married, and a little baby was on her lap. What about my son? Where could he be? Zelia appropriately instructed an old nurse, and then, having calmed down somewhat, came to talk with her daughters. I came to see you today, Mom, exclaimed the older, not only because I wanted news about Dr. Ernesto, but also because today my homesickness for Daddy has been tormenting my heart. Ever since this morning, I've been wondering why I have been thinking so much of him lately. It's something I don't know how to define. She didn't finish. Abundant tears gushed from her eyes. 
To my great surprise, Zelia addressed my daughter in an authoritarian manner. Oh, come now. I've just about had enough. As afflicted as I am, I still have to tolerate your silly worries. Why are you so sentimental, my daughter? You know I've strictly forbidden any mention of your father in this house. Don't you know how it annoys Ernesto? I sold everything that reminded us of the dead past. I even went so far as to have the walls redone, and you can't help me out with this? My younger daughter interrupted. Ever since my poor sister began to get interested in that damned spiritism, she's been living with this foolishness inside her head. Where have we ever seen such nonsense? This story of the dead coming back is utterly absurd. Although the other was still crying, she spoke with difficulty. I'm not talking about religious convictions. So it's a crime to miss Dad? Don't you love him too? Don't you have any feelings about him? If Daddy were with us, Mom, his only son wouldn't be doing all the crazy things he's been doing around here. Now, now, Zelia replied, nervous and annoyed. Each of us must follow the fate assigned by God. Don't forget that Andre is dead. Don't come to me with lamentations and tears for the irredeemable past. I approached my weeping child and tried to dry her tears, whispering words of encouragement and consolation. She didn't hear them, but registered them subjectively as comforting thoughts. At last I found myself face to face with an old turn of events. Now I understood the reason why my true friends had delayed my return home for so long. Anguish and disappointment confusedly followed. My home now seemed to have been a treasure store transformed by robbers and worms. There were no belongings, titles, or affection. There was only one daughter who remained a sentinel to my old and sincere love. Not even the long years of suffering during the first days of my life after death had caused me to shed such bitter tears. The night came and the day returned finding me in the same perplexed condition, hearing opinions and witnessing surprising attitudes that I could never have imagined. In the evening, Clarencio came by to offer the elixir of his friendly and true words. Seeing my disappointment, he kindly said, I understand your sorrow, but at the same time I rejoice for this excellent opportunity for you to have witnessed all this. I don't have any new instructions. Any advice on my part would be inopportune. My dear friend, I cannot help but remember Jesus' recommendation that we love God above all things and our neighbor as ourselves. When that recommendation is followed, it always works real miracles of happiness and understanding on our path. Deeply moved, I thanked him and asked him not to forsake me, but to give me the support I needed. Clarencio smiled and said goodbye. Then, faced with a bitter reality and absolutely alone, I began to ponder that gospel recommendation and felt more serene as I reflected on the situation. After all, why condemn what Zelia had done? What if I myself had been widowed? Would I have been able to bear prolonged loneliness? Wouldn't I have found a thousand excuses to justify taking a new consort? And the poor patient... Why and how could I hate him? Wasn't he also my brother in the house of our Lord? Wouldn't our home perhaps be in a worse state if Zelia hadn't accepted this loving alliance? Therefore, I had to fight against my fierce selfishness. Jesus had led me to other resources. I could no longer act as a man of the earth. My family wasn't only a wife and three children on the planet. Instead, it was comprised of hundreds of patients in the chambers of rectification, and it now extended to the whole universal community. Dominated by new thoughts, I felt the lymph of true love beginning to blossom from the beneficent wounds that reality had opened in my heart.